Have you done research before? Regardless of your answers, research could not be alienated from our daily lives. Chemotherapy. Internet surfing. Forecasting hurricanes and storms. What do these things have in common? For one, they all exhibit the importance of research in everyday life. We would not be able to enjoy the privileges and conveniences of those things without pioneering and persistent research. Research serves various purposes across different fields. Now, imagine yourself as an entrepreneur who wants to open up fast food franchise nationwide. You will definitely want to conduct marketing research on how often people in your country visit fast food restaurant. Let's say, your country has a population of nearly 30 million, seeking everyone's opinion will be absurd and obviously infeasible. That's when inferential data analysis comes into play. Hi, I am Rajesh. Today, I am going to talk about inferential data analysis. Inferential statistics allow you to make inferences or reasonable deduction based on a data set. This indicates that after you have collected data from a sample, you can use inferential statistics to understand the larger population from which the sample is taken. This is because it is too difficult or expensive to collect data from the whole population that you're interested in. However, it's important to use random and unbiased sampling methods in inferential data analysis to secure the validity of statistical inferences. The main purposes of employing inferential data analysis are to make estimates about populations and carry out hypothesis testing to draw conclusions about populations. Since the sample size is always smaller than the actual population size, it goes without saying that some of the population is not recorded in the sample data. This phenomenon will generate sampling error, which is the difference between the true population values and the measured sample values. Therefore, there is always uncertainty in inferential statistics. However, using probability sampling methods could help to reduce this uncertainty. To carry out inferential data analysis, you need to first determine the population. This simply means determining the pool from which you will draw your sample. Second, decide your sample size. Your sample size should be large enough to give you confidence in your results but not so small that the data risk being unrepresentative. Once you've determined the sample size, you can draw a random selection. Lastly, you can use the random sample to infer information about the larger population using inferential techniques. The most common methodologies in inferential statistics are hypothesis tests, confidence intervals, and regression analysis. What is hypothesis testing? It involves checking that your samples repeat the results of your hypothesis or proposed explanation. The aim is to rule out the possibility that a given result has occurred by chance. A topical example of this would be the clinical trials for the COVID-19 vaccine. Since it's impossible to carry out trials on an entire population, Researchers carry out numerous trials on several random, representative samples instead. Next, the confidence intervals are used to estimate certain parameters for a measurement of a population based on sample data. Rather than providing a single mean value, the confidence interval provides a range of values which is often in the form of percentage. Last but not least, regression tests demonstrate whether changes in predictor variables cause changes in an outcome variable. You can decide which regression test to use based on the number and types of variables you have as predictors and outcomes. That's all about inferential data analysis. You can find more details about it on the internet. See you then.